Moving on with the next presentation, Cyprus Asset Cruise Hub. Um, Mr. Paris Papakaralambus, the Director General of SIPA. We'll find out what this means in a minute. So, Paris Papakaralambus is the Director General of Cyprus the Investment Promotion Agency, as well as the Secretary, the Secretary of the Board of Directors. He joined SIPA in July 2012, having occupied a number of senior management positions in the private sector for over 18 years, mostly within the travel, tourism, and cruising industries. Most recently, he held the position of sales and marketing director for Lewis Cruises and Lewis Hellenic Cruises, part of the Lewis Group, where Harry spent almost 15 years of his professional career. During this time, Harry has also served as a chairman and board member for a number of privately owned institutions. But most importantly, he's an alumni of London Metropolitan University, having done a BA degree in Labour and Tourism Management. So great success starts. Yeah. But also a master's degree, a BA from the Cyprus International Institute of Management. So ladies and gentlemen, presentation, Cyprus as a cruise hub. Thank you very much, Nicolas. Thank you, John. Thank you, Alicia, for the invitation. Thank you also to the sponsors for making this event possible. I have to say that I found this morning's uh, presentations extremely interesting, out of the box, as was already mentioned, and certainly a breath of fresh air, which will not be the case with this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> um, as already stated by Nicolas, I'm here under my capacity from my experience with my previous position as a Cyprus Investment Promotion Agency. Uh, although just a small note, I would like to add to the previous uh, interesting presentation uh, by a CTO on the marina of uh, Limassol specifically. Um, my point or my addition would be, if possible, it's a fantastic project. Let's look at the surrounding areas as CTO as well, because it's very important for the whole area to be aligned with what's behind the walls of what's being constructed at the moment. This is something that we need to look in general in Cyprus. Now to the, to the key issue, if you allow me, I've come over here. It's maybe easier and I'm closer to you if you can hear me. Um, Cyprus, as you may know, has the highest percentage of cruisers uh, than any other country in the world. We have something like 60,000 Cypriots on an average year cruising every year. That's almost 10% uh, of the population. We are, however, not a cruise hub unless one considers, in previous years especially, the mini cruises that we had out of Cyprus towards the Mediterranean region. However, for mainstream cruising, as we know it, with the big mega ships, Cyprus is a bit outside the map. Um, the question, mark, first of all, is uh, do we want Cyprus to become a cruise hub? And uh, if the answer is no, then I can conclude my presentation. <laughs> if the answer is yes, then we need to ask ourselves why. And once we know the why, and we still want to do it, so if it's another yes, then we need to make answer the key question, which is how, which is where sometimes we have a little bit of difficulty. Um, do we want it to happen? Here is, a, and is it possible also, it's not only if we want to, it's whether it's something that is feasible within the competitive environment that cruising operates in. Here is a list, a, a chart, if you like, a matrix of um, some factors that influence uh, turnaround ports, uh, the importance that one would put on, the grade and the valuation, the valuation would be the multiple of the two. Uh, the grade is obviously up to each and every one to use for a number of ports in the area, and uh, through this process one could easily identify whether Cyprus has potential or doesn't have potential. I won't go into the details, I've done the exercise myself, a lot of people in the industry have done it, and I think the, the, the findings is quite common. Cyprus does have great opportunity to do this, and there's one more point very important for the CTO. It would probably have to start from winter operations, not from summer operations. And this is one of the biggest problems that our tourism industry faces in Cyprus. <coughs> Seasonality, if not the one and single biggest problem. So what are the benefits 
for cruise ships uh, turning around their ports. First of all, incremental tourism and the huge impact on the economy, and of course, employment. Secondly, incremental business for airlines and airports. Naturally, you have the people flying in, especially if it's a flying cruise. Uh, you have crew flying in, uh, you have the airlines that need to ca cover, uh, carry all these passengers, uh, provisions and everything. Then you have um, accommodation that is needed, uh, and the promotion that the destination gets. Cruising is a very high profile industry, so branding is important, added value that you get. Uh, and uh, certainly the promotion of the destination is a winter hot spot. Utilization of facilities in the low season, they are very low as I already mentioned, so that's another advantage that you have to you know, utilize already existing facilities. It's been estimated that turnaround passengers contribute to the financial lift to the destination of turnaround approximately 10 times more than any visit. And the amount could come up to 500 euros per cap per head. That's an amazing contribution that a cruise and state passenger would have for just staying three days and five days and back. Now you may find the 500 euros a little bit high, but if you start considering accommodation in hotels, transfers, other sort of excursions that they may take, hotels, restaurants, taxes, airport taxes, port taxes, and all the rest, the implication that this has in the economy, the, the end result is at least 500 euros, actually some US studies say it's over a thousand dollars. Now how, how a cruise turnaround tabs are made, and I highlight the, the word made here, this is an example of Abu Dhabi and MSC uh, putting their efforts together to actually build a cruise hub out of absolutely nothing. Abu Dhabi had zero calls by 2007-2008. Uh, in 2010, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, they came into an agreement with MSC. They provided the cruise company with some incentives and uh, the facilities that were necessary. They offered um, uh, advertising, promotion uh, funds, and a few other uh, attractions uh, to make it interesting for them and they got MSC, one of the largest companies and most well known in, in, in Europe, to start cruising in winter out of Africa. I won't go into details, if anybody wants to give this, uh, this is our resources from Sea Trade. Uh, it's, uh, it's history anyway, we all know uh, the facts. Now winter cruises and why Cyprus? First of all, it's perfectly located. It's in the eastern Mediterranean, it's probably the warmest place in the Mediterranean to cruise, and it has exceptional marquee destinations around it. It has the Holy Land, it has the pyramids, it has Lebanon, it's Cyprus itself, it has Turkey to the north if you like, it has Crete roads to very close proximity. It's also a good winter, winter sun destination. It is a stable political situation compared to some of its contenders, which is Egypt, Israel, and to some extent Turkey. However, this is also the drawback of the area, especially these days. The fact that Egypt, and to some extent Lebanon, and to lesser extent Israel, have ups and downs uh, in political stability, mainly Egypt recently, uh, means that the whole area is not so attractive for tourists. Although having said that, it's much more, uh, people are much uh, more likely to go on a cruise ship and visit a destination like Egypt rather than take a plane and go and spend three more days. With a cruise ship, because you go in the morning, you take the bus, you go and visit the, the sites and come back, uh, it has been uh, observed that it, it's much more, um, people are much more likely to do it. It's an EU country and we are in the Euro. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> uh, don't worry, we will keep it up. Uh, we have two new airports, a very close proximity between themselves and between the two ports that we have inside, for which is Limassol and Larnac at the moment. Good tourism infrastructure and services all around, and uh, our ports are certainly not congested, especially not in winter. 
which is a big, big problem actually. Congested uh, ports is a very big problem that's coming up in the cruising industry. If you look at ports like Barcelona, Chivita Vecchia, Venice, it's amazing what's going on there. Great itineraries can be operated, as I mentioned earlier, at very low mileage and low speed. Now, this is very important to the cruise companies. They don't want to be saving at 20 knots an hour, they want to be saving at 14, 15 knots an hour. It's saving them 50, 60 percent of fuel. They don't want to be sailing for hours and hours, again, it's a fuel issue. They want to be sailing short distances, short speeds. An itinerary from, uh, let's say, Cyprus, Israel, Lebanon, Egypt, uh, you can have uh, Port Said and Alexandria, Antalya, or Rhodes, and back to Cyprus, the mileage is approximately half of what the seven-day itinerary would have in Central uh, Mediterranean or Eastern Mediterranean, even less, even more so. Because the distances there are much, much larger. Um, just a short note that despite the above improvement in specific areas directly related to cruising are needed, and we need to work on these things, and we need to work with them in a coherent fashion. Just some uh, I thought that the picture is a thousand words, actually. So I, I put this together. Um, the red spots, as you can see, are the main summer turnaround ports that exist at the moment. The yellow spots uh, are the winter turnaround ports that could be used, possibly. Uh, however, the areas where winter cruising would be safer or more ideal, let's say, it's certainly this area to the uh, south and to the east. The center, this is called the Gulf of Lions, for example, for uh, well-known reasons. Uh, so, certainly Eastern Mediterranean has great opportunity. And considering the attractions around the area, as you can see here also from the circle, the distances are indeed very small, rather than having to leave, for example, from Barcelona and go all the way uh, to Tunis or even uh, further to the west. So why should we be starting in winter? Uh, here we go. Despite the fact that political situation in some of the marquee destinations as mentioned remains unstable, <laughs> winter cruising is becoming a big challenge for almost every single cruise company in the world. They are building capacity less so the last three years as done before. However, uh, winter is a challenge. The Caribbean is not picking up. Australia is a little bit steady. The rest of the winter destinations cannot absorb the whole capacity that has come into the market. Uh, Cyprus is located in, in the middle of uh, two areas in the Mediterranean that are suitable. And most winter cruises for the Europeans have to be combined with a flight anyway, so flying to Cyprus would not be an issue. The existing summer Mediterranean terrain around sports are well positioned and have considerable competitive advantages over Cyprus. This is another reason why we need to start with, uh, with winter. For example, we are far away from the source market, we are far away from Germany, you have to fly to Cyprus to get a cruise, you kind of drive to Venice, for example. The same goes with a lot of other uh, European <laughs> countries. We have mm, very weak connections to North America flight connections in Cyprus. Uh, we are accessible only by air. Port facilities and infrastructure, although acceptable, so certainly need a little bit of uh, touching up. And uh, we are not well known as a cruise hub. Now, there are certainly a lot of choices um, that um, cruise companies have, so we actually need to build the appropriate image and build the facilities and build the plan and target the cruise companies, which are the key parameter, obviously, to, to achieving uh, this uh, project. And, uh, what needs to be done is the key slide at the end of the day. First of all, we need to present, to draft a plan and present it uh, to 
private and public stakeholders so as to get consensus. I'll give you an example of what I mean here. Um, tourism is an industry where a lot of different uh, uh, sectors or factors play a role. If along this chain of production you have five, six different individuals or companies involved and everybody wants a 15% return on it, then by the end, the end product comes out, uh, you can forget about it, you are out of the market. Um, you need to get the hoteliers, you need to get the uh, carriers, you need to get the ports, the taxes if you like, you need to get just about everybody who is involved to appreciate that winter is a different story and this is a new product and we need to invest in it. And only once a unique product can be provided to cruise lines, will Cyprus be competitive. So you need consensus basically. And the key word is investment. It's not an expense, it's an investment. There are opportunities to build specific tax incentives, for example, there is income. Um, as already mentioned, uh, we need a complete package to be able to send the idea, and we need to support the plan through exceptional services. Once it's there, once we promoted it, managing to get a cruise company uh, to Cyprus to start operating out of it, then we have to deliver the product. And it's very important to realize that the first one to be able to offer this package and get into the market and establish itself as the Eastern Mediterranean cruise hub will almost certainly be the one that will be the sole cruise hub destination in the Eastern Mediterranean. And we should also remember that everyone is looking for better utilization of their assets in the mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you.